video I am going to uh, tell you what's in here in there it's, uh, how much dietary protein one may take daily so we used to take a lot of proteins and we we hope that we are getting enough of protein in the diet but there are some details uh, general population should know but at the moment only nutri nutrient specialist professors and research people know reality of protein intake and they have done experiments but it's not available for common people really common people need to know it because they are the one who consume proteins they, they should have uh, uh, some knowledge to get the ideal situation of protein intake the purpose of this video is to give that common as simply as possible uh, I am using uh, Food and Agriculture Organization 2011 uh, article it's a paper which is dietary protein quality evaluation in human nutrition and also some other articles were useful for me uh, one important article was a comparison of dietary protein dig digestibility based on DIAAS scoring which will come later in vegetarians and non-vegetarian athletes and also uh, anti-nutrients in plant-based foods a review article those three were helpful for me to get these more details in addition to my basic knowledge so when we are taking protein it's very important because it is helpful for our growth and tissue repairs and these days is very important because we are exposed to a pandemic of COVID-19 so that our immune function is very important at this time that the innate immunities mainly depend on proteins because most of those uh, innate immunity enzymes and various chemicals interferons, interleukins they are consist of protein if we and even antibodies and these proteins are helpful for more and more uh, production of those products I mean the innate immunity proteins and enzymes and also antibodies for our adaptive immunity In, then it's also important for growth and also then the muscle and skeletal mass growth is important uh, there and our mental function of mood and sleep patterns it has antioxidant action also in the short term in the long term this high protein content, high nutritive proteins are affecting our healthy aging and our growth and the also our immunity, our cognitive functions, our memory and language functions and also it's important to prevent chronic diseases something like cardiovascular diseases cancers and the anti nutri this oxidate radical damages repairs so the, those are the important aspects of protein so when we see a label we see uh, it has protein it says protein 8 grams in 60 gram of this food there's a protein and nutrition facts in the label from a food 
I'm going to start from there. So if we get it, that means in 1,100 grams of food has 13 grams of protein. This is very common. We know all. What, but what we have to know whether this uh, 13 grams of protein is available to uh, our digestion, whether they absorb, whether they are available to our protein synthesis with outside protein, whether it is available for our protein synthesis. So that is what I am going to tell you how we can think whether this, how to settle this problem of whether this 13 gram in this food is available for us to get the protein synthesis. Uh, because protein synthesis needs some requirements. So one is the, the for the protein synthesis we need them you know there are 21 amino acids out of them the body cannot synthesize some amino acids. There are 11 so those are called indispensable amino acids. Indispensable amino acids, some of them are here. So you can go through that list. So if you take an example, the human milk. I got this from uh, Food and Agriculture Organization and WHO website 2007. So this amino acid in uh, protein. So these are the indispensable amino acid in human milk. And the content of those amino acids are here. That is what we are going to look for, whether they are adequate. So it is done by diet scoring. So before that, I, I think we should know what's happening here. That when, when we take protein, it can go into two ways. One is, uh, it's mentioned somewhere. Uh, this is the concept that I'm going to explain. The, when we take uh, the diet, it's go into uh, either oxidation or protein synthesis. This protein synthesis happen if those all amino acids are there in optimum level. So optimum level that they did it need. Otherwise all the amino acid, rest of the amino acid, whatever they are, is going to oxidize. That means it's going to take only amino acid which is at the limiting level of amino acid. The whichever is the lowest is the one they take. At that level all amino acid they take rest of them whichever they are high they, they are not not going to use for protein synthesis they are going to oxidize you can learn this uh, when i'm telling further about this that's the concept that you just get it at, at this moment so this dias scoring it, it is the, the what this recommended by food and agriculture organization Dias means dietary indispensable amino acid score. It's, it's di dietary digestible indispensable amino acid score. So that means it's, it's uh, you may think these are words difficult but under, try to understand the concept of that. 
this is what I am telling that when the amino acid we, we need some reference proteins as ideal level of amino acids of each amino acid I said that there are 11 in this principal amino acid each amino acid should have a ideal reference range out of that our dietary protein has some amino acids and we divide that the what the value of amino acid milligram in our dietary protein from that reference protein and get into 100 so these levels are done uh, in our bowels small bowels small we call in small intestine and small bowels has uh, the last portion of the small bowel at the last portion small bowel they take the food samples and find how how much of them are digested and absorbed or each amino acid by that way they calculate this and they have calculations anyway this is you can get the basic idea it is from the reference range how much of amino acid by that way we can see how this our diet the protein uh, is available for protein synthesis this is quantifying system then this uh, that's what I told through ideal digestibility of dietary proteins when we get through ideal digestible dietary proteins that means they are a lot we don't get and uh, we they are antioxidants and sorry anti nutrients those anti nutrients can disturb to protein absorption amino acid absorption they they, they are here the, this is in a separate video I have done about anti nutrients how we can reduce anti nutrients if you go by those topics you can find more details but I am just telling here the tannins and the phytates, trypsin inhibitors, glucosinolate and those are anti-nutrients they bind to amino acids and proteins and impair their absorption then we cannot use it for protein synthesis in the body so most of those are available are they are in these foods that's what I am giving examples like you mean soya, lentils, sweet potatoes, carrots, tomatoes and all those but the, the, we can reduce that there are ways that's what I explain in another video I have already done that so I told you about this concept and so the new when somebody is telling at the beginning I was telling that 13 grams of protein is there in 100 grams of food so they when they are telling about it is a nutrient value the food and agriculture organization has some recommendations so if they are going to say it is the source of protein that people that particular food should have 10% of M NRV NRV is the nutrition reference value nutrient reference value so nutrient reference value is we should have 50 gram 50 gram of protein per 100 gram of dietary protein so that is 0.8 per 100 gram of dietary protein uh, per kg uh, then then we take 50 gram and then if that uh, neutral reference value should be at least 10 percent of this if it is a solid uh, diet protein uh, and if it is a liquid something like milk it should have 5 percent of NPU 100 ml of liquid and then these are the others so that way <clears throat> the food and agriculture organization WHO has regulated 
the when some when the businessman for food producers say is a source of protein they cannot say it is a source of protein if they are not going to meet these criteria out of 50 gram it should have at least 10% that particular protein in uh, it is solid so I, i will tell you the details again then you can understand it better so this is an example of dias or protein quality assessment in remember when you are making claims and see what is happening here so we get wheat peas and whole milk powder and the we get the amounts 100 grams 100 grams 100 grams and the protein content here in the wheat it says 11 and peas it says 21 protein and whole milk powder it says 28 so we can straight away see it is very good 21 peas is 28 and is 11 and the di- dias when we get the digestibility at the terminal ileum this amino acids level and then um, by the, by the reach to the terminal ileum there should be this much of uh, uh, digested so that is basically what we do with dias each am for each amino acids Which, which are indispensable so digestibility of indispensable amino acid is score for wheat is 40 for peas is 54 56 it's can't see 64 and then the whole milk is 122 this is the, because they have indispensable amino acids some are low so that is the limiting factor of protein synthesis because by that way this is they have done when you go through all of my uh, video you will understand what is it again and again so then we can say quality of wheat when we consider both it is low peas we say the quality is low and whole milk we say it is high and we get the quantity this 11 is apparently high the peas it is high even the whole milk it is high but when we go through this digestible dia is values the quality is there's no protein quality in wheat there's no protein quality in peas but high level of protein quality is there in whole milk this dia is values the w food and agriculture organization w to recommend it should be over 75% over 75% to be a source good source of protein um, if it is around 90 then it is high source of protein so anyway at least there should be 75% that's what happened these two cut off because they don't have 75% of dies so they have no protein value yeah, really they are not good source all milk powder since it is has 122 is very high that's what it's basically you can understand what is it then i will go to my i took some common foods common foods and then i am um, i am giving the uh, protein various amino acid values M- more common 
and minor acid deficiencies in uh, there are four here those four are analyzed here and these then di the uh, true ileal amino acid availability is uh, the uh, this that's uh, decimal range the this is more crowded but if you go through carefully you can see what is i'm going to tell so this is the other one so it's it is little bit you can see this this is a protein content of various foods and they, they are the essential uh, indispensable amino acids common four is here and the uh, levels are here and then they are true when this is when this is dietary level when it come to ileal digestion by the time it came to come to ileum that is the terminal part of small bowel how much it is digested so it is should be i said it should be more than uh, 0.75 so how these are here so 90.92 0.8 0.7 so that is not eligible like that so any of these one in a say one foot if any one of these one is one may be high one may be low but when it is low it is going to affect on the protein quality because then it won't go into protein synthesis this food's protein and part of it is going to protein synthesis but part of it is going to oxidize and use for energy so that is useless because we have some other energy sources carbohydrate and uh, fat which are less expensive than proteins so this is the what i am going to say uh, what i was telling so far so this is the their claim how much of proteins are there in each these foods these foods this uh, you enlarge you can see this is milk meat and cereals and everything are there and here is the protein well you have some common foods i took uh, to show you and here is the same foods uh, di ds protein that's what i was telling there should be if it is a good source of protein or source of protein it should have 0.75 this is that black line so various milk it is all amino acids exceed in that the in x all amino acids are exceed in that these are the usual re reducing amino acids that the challenging amino acids in dietary foods um, so this here bread also has good but if you get a cereal corn there are some uh, going below only one is uh, approaching 0.75 so the when protein synthesis they consider only this limit slower one and the rest of them managers are going to oxidize in even in this case of Uh, this one and see this uh, maroon color because of that the protein digest uh, availability of other the amino acids which is at a higher level are not going to use because this amino acid is going to limit the protein synthesis of the amino acid so all these two same thing happen this maroon color one that's a particular amino acid color and then so this that's what happened because of this it's going to limit the protein synthesis that's what i try to explain here i i like to go to my what i have taken this from and then i will show you what uh, more details here are some of those uh, foods 
appear here and then uh, it's graph and you can see meat here and whole protein concentrate and then I try to go to their analysis of uh, amino acids it's a, that is in the indispensable amino acid levels for amino acids and the for various foods you can see it's taught highly vary it is it's, it's different to the protein value so this is how you, are, you can see this so when we get meat this black color is the one that is that is 75 0.75 margin so this is for meat this for soy protein the isolate not the soy protein if you get soy milk it is affected here if you get uh, soy beans uh, see it's different that is different soy milk is different but soy protein isolate is different that the, you have to understand this soy protein itself has some anti-nutrients and there are ways to reduce anti-nutrients by maybe sprouting uh, autoclaving autoclaving for canning and some uh, fermentation methods can use to reduce those uh, anti-nutrients and we can get the this desired levels of protein we can improve in the what available protein so we say that soy protein is good but it has to uh, process in a particular way to get the that much of protein so that is what uh, I want to tell you so the these uh, I got these sources mentioned here to get uh, give you this uh, knowledge so basically what is it's telling is when we take protein it is not the real protein value then we take the protein they, they say its values in uh, uh, the, in the label but when we consider their uh, real availability at the uh, availability for protein synthesis at the end of by the end of lower bowel uh, small bowel sorry low, not low bowel at the end of small bowel that's where it is terminate to absorb uh, proteins amino acids and then then that's the at the ideal level what is available so it is what we saw here through availability of through availability at the ideal this is what so there are factors you have to consider when we take proteins when we take our proteins you have to think of what are the anti-nutrients there and how to reduce those anti-nutrients probably we can, we can avoid the anti-nutrients uh, to another meal we can uh, we can take it a little later but how to improve these proteins values and you, you can get to know uh, by going through the, the my chart there and mm, so that is basically about protein thank you very much if you have any questions uh, you you can ask and if you like this you can thumb up and the uh, you can share it with your friends and uh,
I will give more and more of them uh, and you can, if you want you can subscribe and thank you very much.